Hello everyone, welcome to Good Morning America Health. I'm Tanya Rivero. When it comes to cardiac emergency, a defibrillator can be a lifesaver, but a new generation of the device is making them more user-friendly and even more remarkable, if that's possible. Joining us today to take a look is Dr. Christopher McGovern, cardiothoracic surgeon at the Morristown Memorial Hospital. Dr. McGovern, great to see you again. Good morning, great Thanks to be here. Thanks for being here. Now, if you wouldn't mind starting with explaining the difference between an implantable defibrillator and a pacemaker. It's, it's easy to confuse the two, and even people in the medical community struggle with the difference between the two. They're similar in the sense that they're both implantable devices that are designed to deal with electrical problems in the heart. They're both generally implanted in the chest. Insulated wires are then connected to the device, and the wire is fed and anchored into the heart. And that there sort of ends the similarity. What they do is very different. A pacemaker is designed to detect a very slow heart rhythm. It then sends an electrical pulse to the heart, makes the heart beat. It's a very gentle pulse, so you don't feel it as a patient, and it uses so little energy that these pacemakers last five or six years. The defibrillator, on the other hand, senses a very different rhythm. It looks for dangerous, fast, irregular rhythms that can be fatal and that can lead to a cardiac arrest. And it doesn't send a gentle pulse, it sends a very strong pulse to the heart that shocks the heart and stuns the heart and terminates the dangerous rhythm so that a normal rhythm can resume. And so the patient who needs a defibrillator is not the same patient who needs a pacemaker. That's exactly right, very different. A okay. patient that needs a pacemaker may just have a slow heart rate and someone that needs a defibrillator is someone who's at risk for having these dangerous so rhythms. A more serious condition. It is. All right, now let's talk a little bit about defibrillators because there's certainly a lot of exciting new science in this field, isn't there? There is. If you wouldn't mind walking us through the sort of the range of defibrillators as they now exist. Sure. We've known since the 1940s that defibrillators work, that the idea of giving shock to, to someone who has an irregular rhythm can bring them back. And we have three different types that we use, Tanya. And the one in the center here is our workhorse. This is a, an external defibrillator that we use in hospitals and ambulances. It's very strong. It's very powerful. It is completely manual. And by that I mean you have to know what you're doing yeah. when you use it. it. It can be dangerous if you're not. You have to be able to identify the rhythm yourself. You put the paddles on the patient. You determine whether or not to shock the patient. You push the button and it goes. So it's really only for trained healthcare workers. Exactly. Now we have another device that is very similar which is called an AED, an, an automatic external defibrillator. It's similar in the fact that it shocks patients from the outside. It's more compact, as you can see, mm -hmm. but the difference is this one has a brain. This one is automated, so you don't need to know what you're doing. If you see someone that's had an arrest, you open this box, it has voice prompts, it gets you through what you need to do, and it, it analyzes the rhythm on its own and determines whether or not you need a shock. So this is the kind of defibrillator you can keep in your trunk or at a school, at a club, something like that. That's exactly right, Tanya. And you see them everywhere now. And we know it's important to have them everywhere because most cardiac arrests don't occur in the hospital. They occur out in the public. And, and if you're not on top of these people in five to seven minutes, they're not going to make it. And an ambulance takes 10 minutes to arrive. So you need to have these things available, and you need to be you can't be afraid to use them. So this is for the uninitiated layman. Just dive right in. Exactly Don't be afraid right. if That's you see right. one of these around. That's okay. Right. Now tell us about this tiny little device here. Now this this little guy looks small, but he is really the Ferrari of <laughs> defibrillators. Uh, this is an, an implantable defibrillator. It's put in by a surgeon or by a specialized cardiologist called an electrophysiologist. It, it's placed in the chest, and this wire, as we mentioned before, is advanced to the to the a chamber in the heart and it's secured into position. And this is on 24-7. It detects dangerous rhythms and it's able to give a shock and get patients out of this rhythm. And we've been, we've been putting these in since the, the 1980s and now worldwide we put in 10 to 20,000 of these every month. So they work very well. They work and they save countless lives. And now there's something even more advanced out there, right? Tell us about it the cutting edge of the yeah, th this is very exciting it's actually a uh, a less invasive way of putting these defibrillators in a study was just released last week in the new england journal of medicine looking at the safety and the efficacy of using a less invasive defibrillator and the way it worked is as follows they use basically the same hardware but instead of placing the wire into the heart they just put the wire into the skin very superficial and what they found 
in a select group of patients was that it worked just as well as the other defibrillator. And that's great news because it's a less invasive approach. That when we put these in, we're always worrying the back of our heads about injuring things because we put these wires through right. big structures, through veins and through the heart. You can perforate the heart, you can perforate veins, you can collapse a lung. And being able to put these in just superficially takes that out of the equation. It'll and, be much safer. And Dr. McGovern, who are these good for? Who are the patients that would benefit? Well, patients that benefit from defibrillators are patients that are at risk for having irregular heart rhythms. They may be people that have had irregular heart rhythms in the past. They may be people that have congenital or genetic problems that predispose them. They may also be people like our former Vice President, Dick Cheney, mm -hmm. who had a defibrillator. Sure. If he had a weakened heart muscle as a result of multiple heart attacks, and that is this kind of patient that may benefit from a defibrillator as well. And an, imp an, an implantable one as well. That is correct. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. McGovern. Fascinating conversation about defibrillators. And you can stay on top of all the news in the world of health and wellness by heading to the health page at abcnews.com.